Oh, recording in progress. Um, who's here? Hello, folks. We're two minutes away. I just wanted to say hello and welcome. Uh, I hope you've all brought um, questions to ask. And um, we should have a good time today, I hope. Uh, let's see. I don't have any questions at the moment. Um, can everybody hear me? If you could just put a, a note in the chat. Let me know if you can see me and hear me. That would be terrific. Anybody? <laughs> Oh, there's my list of people. Great. Okay. Okay, I'm setting it so that anybody can talk if they choose to. Um, if you'd like to ask questions, you can pop them in the chat or you can just um, go ahead and talk. Um, there'll be uh, like a section um, to ask questions at the end. So we'll, I'll go through the presentation first and like go through all the details and then you can ask um, questions afterwards. Okay, does that sound good to everybody? All right, chat is disabled, but I can see and hear you. Okay. Um, Good. Okay. Well, I'll I'll try to address everybody's questions as we go along. Um, you should be able to chat um, if you've registered and joined um, through the invitation that you were sent. Okay. So let's get going here. My name is Laura. Nice to meet you all. I'm the admissions officer here at the RHS desk or the Rehab Sciences desk. I've been. This is my fourth time through. Um, I started at the beginning of 2020, uh, so I've gone through two lockdown sessions and one regular um, admission cycle, so <laughs> I've had a pretty good education um, in terms of the space and what's required, uh, whether it's um, an online thing during a pandemic or whether it's a regular, regular session where students can actually join, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start my presentation. Okay, slideshow from the beginning. Okay, so here we go. Um, for studying in physiotherapy, we're going to go through all the details that you'll need for admissions. And um, we'll start off, I'll kind of just let you know what, how OzTrack helps, like what our purpose here is for you guys, and um, how we can assist you with your applications and your submissions and everything that comes after. Um, we can go through all the different types of physiotherapy degrees and what the requirements are for admission to each program. And then we'll touch on a little bit about what it's what you'll need to come home to practice because there is a process and we'll go through the whole thing. So that's me, Lara Klimko. I'm your, um, your student facing um, administrations officer and um, the peanut butter to my jam is Leanna Turner. She's the university facing uh, admissions officer and she's here to help you um, to communicate with the universities on your behalf. Okay, so what is OzTrack? OzTrack is an education agent. What that means is that we are here to assist you with your applications. We're here to help you collate all of your documents. Um, and then we put them together. We, we make sure that you're putting your, your best foot forward. Um, we focus on programs that we know that you'll have success in. And so you don't waste time with a lot of uh, unsuccessful outcomes and so forth. And it's all free for students. We are the official representative of 12 Australian universities and one New Zealand university. Um, as of now, we're really just focusing on dentistry for the New Zealand university, but we've got um, seven, seven postgraduate university programs um, all set to go and seven undergrad PT programs um, at various universities across the country. Um, so we are um, dedicated to one particular 
uh, program area, generally speaking. So my, my purview is rehab sciences. So I do physiotherapy, occupational therapy, chiropractic, and those types of, of things. You'll find if you are interested in other programs like medicine, there's a whole team dedicated to that. Dentistry, there's a whole team dedica dedicated to that and so forth. Uh, we have sent more than a thousand students from North America to Australia to commence in programs over the last two years, which is pretty impressive, I think. Okay, so here's how we do it. Okay, so first, first step is to determine your eligibility for each program. So what we can do is take a look at um, your transcripts as soon as they come in, or you can send us unofficials um, before you even start the process. We can go through and let you know, do you have prereq prerequisites for all of the programs? Do you meet um, GPA uh, minimums? And then we kind of steer you in the right direction. Um, we assist you by applying to multiple universities at once. So if you want to apply to all seven programs, you are absolutely free to do that. And then we can help you kind of narrow down uh, your options once your offers come rolling in. Uh, we certify transcripts and submit apps to the university. So what a certified transcript means? That is that um, in Australia, the universities require all academic doc documents to be certified official. So if you were applying on your own, you would have to go through a notary. In our case, and you'd have to do it for each university. If you use Austrack, you only need to send one set of documents, academic documents to us. We certify them official and then send them to as many programs as you wish to apply to. Um, we assess and advocate for each student as needed. Sometimes unsuccessfuls come through and we can't quite figure out why. So we have um, the leverage to be able to go back to the universities and, and see if we can change outcomes for, for students who we think um, have met the requirements. And then once it comes time to accept an offer, we'll help you narrow down uh, which offers are best for you, which ones you are most happy with. We can help you identify those and then help to get you ready to go with our pre-departure program. So we can offer some, uh, some general advice and resources to get your visa applications, your compliance requirements, um, and um, help you get you set up uh, once you're overseas, give you resources to find um, accommodations, travel um, from the airport to your accommodations, so forth, okay? So first thing is that um, you ask us all the questions that you have, and this is a really good place to start. Um, then we'll assess your transcripts. We um, set your docs to all the universities, and then the offer comes through. We'll help you, as I said, narrow down your options and then help you with the guidance for, uh, to get you overseas, and then you are set to go. Okay, so here's what the, the numbers are looking like for um, Austrac students who have applied in the last year or uh, so the last two last year. So last year there were 801 applications submitted. Incredible. Um, there were 320 offers received and we've had 503 grads go um, of to complete um, Australian programs in the last five years. And the competitive GPA on, on average, and it's pretty broad, is a 3.0 out of 4.0. Okay, so when should I start my application? This is a really good question because we have programs starting all through the year, which is really strange. It's different from just about every other program. Um, so we have three programs that start in semester one, which in Australia is February. So that's called this, um, it's the summer semester. So it's hard to get your head around, I know, but the seasons are flipped, of course. So the academic calendar follows the calendar calendar. So semester one starts at the beginning of the year. Uh, we have three programs starting starting in semester two, which is either May or July, depending on the program, and then one that starts right at the end of November. Um, so there's always another program coming up. So uh, we find that it's best to start right around now. Now is the ideal time to get applications started because many programs don't even start looking at applications until like um, the end of this month or starting next month. So um, best to start with an interim transcript that shows your final results from your fall semester and your full enrollment for your, your winter semester. So what that means is that in Australia, they can start assessing your application using your penultimate semester's results. So if you can order me um, an official transcript to arrive from university anytime, now is a great time to start. Um, you can still apply where your, your, uh, your studies are still in progress and um, uh, qualified applicants can receive a conditional offer. Often that condition will be the completion of your current degree and the conferral of your degree. And you have to meet certain benchmarks for GPA, but you would be pretty sure that you'd be on track by then. 
Um, and then once you've grad, grad, graduated and you have your degree conferred, you can order a final tr transcript, which will meet the conditions of an offer, and then you can start thinking about accepting. Okay, so now let's get into the nitty gritty of all the details of the programs. So we have five programs now that are Doctor of Physiotherapy and two that are Master of Physiotherapy. Students often uh, want to find want to know what that means exactly. So the Doctor of Physiotherapy, despite the name, is not a doctorate. It is an extended master's program. So the Master of Physiotherapy is a four semester program delivered over a two year period. The Doctor of Physiotherapy is a six semester program delivered over a three year period, except in the case of Bond, where the six semesters are fast tracked over a two year period. So that's really attractive for some students because they can be out in the workplace and working in Australia right away after grad and um, a year ahead of the other DPT grads which is a nice and attractive thing. So what's the real difference between the two programs? Honestly, it's the length. So as I said, the Master of Physiotherapy is usually is four semesters, two years. Doctor of Physiotherapy, six semesters over two or three years. Um, bo both uh, degrees are equally eligible to come back to Canada to go through the licensure process to become a professional physiotherapist. The biggest difference between these two programs other than the length is that because there are two extra semesters, the doctor of physiotherapy just has more options in terms of electives. So if you're thinking about um, going into a specialty, you may want to try out some courses to see what your best fit is and your best um, pathway into a, a a specialty if that's your your focus. Um, often there'll be more coursework and clinical hours involved, especially the clinical hours. That's something you really want to watch out for because of course you need 1,025 supervised clinical hours to uh, be eligible to register with CAPR, which is the Canadian Alliance of Physiotherapy Regulators, which is the body that you'll uh, be working with to start your uh, credentialing when you come home. The DPT often includes a research project as well, which means that if your ultimate goal is one day to, be, to get a doctorate in physiotherapy, to get a PhD, this will set you up nicely. Um, the doctor of physiotherapy is also pretty much required for any student who wants to work and live in the United States. Um, it's, it'll, the, the requirements will differ from state to state, but by and large, what I've heard is that the DPT is, um, is preferred overall. Okay, so now what do you need to get into these programs? Okay, so the prerequisites are, they vary between the universities, but if you have any and all of these uh, prerequisite subjects, you can be eligible for at least some of the programs. So um, musculoskeletal anatomy and functional anatomy. Um, so you'll need at least two semesters for some programs. Other programs, really, you only need one semester of anatomy. Um, human physiology. Again, some universities prefer to see two semesters. Others prefer to see one human and one exercise phys. Um, some universities want to see two semesters of human phys and an, a semester of exercise phys. So that's something to consider if you're still in like third year, second year, and you're looking ahead um, to what you might need. Um, one university wants to see a semester of biomechanics. Um, two of them want to see a semester of psychology. 100 level is fine. Intro to psych is absolutely uh, um, uh, preferred. Um, a research methods and or a statistics. It depends on the university. Flinders wants to see a research methods. Monash wants to see a statistics, but um, usually you can kind of mix and match them. Um, okay, so in the case of the new program at Sydney, which has recently discontinued its master of physiotherapy and started a doctor of physiotherapy, there are no real prerequisites at all. Um, there's an, an expectation that students will have a background in human anatomy and human phys, but there's no specific prerequisites required any longer. Um, so the minimum GPA is, uh, it kind of starts around 65. A 65 will get you in the door at Bond. Um, but for most other programs, at least a 70% um, is the minimum to just to apply. The competitive uh, GPA is a little bit higher. So we want to see students with um, 75 and up to be eligible to at least four out of the seven programs. Um, two of the programs are 3.2 out of 4.0 or 78% and up. 
So um, they're a little bit more competitive. There are no admissions tests, no MCATs, no DATs, no CARMs, no nothing like that. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so coming home to practice. All right, now I want to make it clear that there's really only two extra steps for international graduates. Um, domestic graduates have to go through just about the same process as international grads. So let's start and talk about what um, the Australian degrees can offer you. So these are internationally recognized qualifications. Many of our universities are part of the group of eight in Australia, which is kind of like the Ivy League. Um, they're all high ranking. If you look at the um, at the different university rankings, like the World Education um, Index, and then the, the QS rankings, uh, Australian universities are, are generally pretty high up on those, on those lists. Um, the clinical and coursework hours required to practice will vary by province. However, you do absolutely have to have that 1,025 uh, minimum of supervised clinical hours to just to uh, uh, apply to CAPR to start the credentialing process. Um, you you'll need you should and we we strongly urge that you get in touch with your provincial board, your regulatory board, to make sure that you know exactly what you'll need to come back before you finish your program. You don't want to graduate and then find out oh I, I needed an, another research credit or something. So make sure that you know what to expect before you start. Um, you can contact the the provincial regulatory boards and uh, we have them fully listed on our website as well so you can contact them first before you start anything and then we can we, of course we'll help you through the whole thing okay so how do you how do you do the whole process to come back to Canada so the first thing is to take an online course called the context of physiotherapy in Canada this is one of the steps that international grads have to do that domestic grads don't um, it's, I think it's a three, six week, three month course, something like that. You can take it online. You can do it when you're still in Australia. Um, University of Toronto has one of these courses. Uh, Capper will have a list as well that you can choose from because it's always changing. Um, but U of T definitely has it. I think University of Alberta as well has this course. Um, step two will be to have your credentials assessed. So this is the other step that international grads have to do. So what you'll do is it's essentially like applying to university all over again. So you will submit to them the documents such as your completed degree, um, your transcripts, uh, course outlines from the courses that you took uh, to meet the prereqs, um, and then evidence that you've covered the 1,025 hours of clinical practice. Step three is to write the written part of the physiotherapy competency exam. This is where you get into step with all of the rest of the domestic grads. And so they all have to go through this too. So there first is the written. And then once you've passed the written part of the exam, you can start, you can apply for um, a provisional license. So you can actually get to work, work in your prov province under supervision until you're ready to do the clinical part. So the clinical part um, was discontinued by CAPR during the pandemic. However, uh, the provinces have stepped up and put their own um, portion of this clinical OSCE part of the, of the exam into practice. So in provinces like um, BC, Alberta, and Ontario, they have their own exam. So you just have to register with the province. Other provinces have different things. So you may have to do um, a, a placement or something like that. We have, again, it's all broken down on our website. So you can see which each province requires. Once you finish the clinical part, that's when you register with the provincial regulatory body and become a professional professor, physiotherapist. Okay, so university grads from Australia rank or stack up pretty well um, with other international grads to complete this exam. 81% um, of our Australian grads pass on the first attempt, and then 73% pass the clinical on the first attempt, which is both of those are better than the UK. So <laughs> something to consider. Okay, so I will open it up for, well, first we'll do the joke. Okay, so what did the ther physiotherapist say to the patient complaining about lower leg pain? He said, it's gonna, it's going to be okay, lol. Okay, so this is, these are our contact um, numbers and um, emails. And of course, you can just email me directly, lara at oztrack.com. And we'll end it there. And I will stop sharing. And we'll take it from there. Okay, so um, let me see 
if anybody has any questions, you could pop them in the chat. Uh, anybody? I don't see anybody in the chat. Anybody? Okay, well, if no one has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions directly if you'd like to give me a call. Um, the numbers are all posted on the website. Um, you can also send me an email, shoot me a question anytime. Uh, my email address again is lara, L-A-R-A, at oztrack.com. Okay, thank you so much. I hope you all learned a lot. Oh, I see a question pop up. Um, is there an option to delay by a year once you get accepted? Oh, that's a good question. Generally speaking, no, there's no option to defer. Um, and the reason for that is that these are quota programs. So they have a certain number of seats set aside for students. And um, so they can't afford to have students sitting on seats um, from year to year. So, but there's no, absolutely no problem if you get an offer and then decide, geez, I, I really can't go this year. Um, you can decline an offer. Um, you can even accept an offer and then change your mind and withdraw and apply again. If you, once you apply again in the following year, um, um, they'll, they'll assess you fairly, same as with fresh eyes and start from the beginning and they won't hold it against you at all if you reapply after de declining, um, withdrawing or just canceling an application. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, how is the percentage of Australian students passing their licensing exams the first time compared to domestic students? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's pretty similar. Uh, I think uh, they're just about the same. If, in, if the Australian results are actually a tiny bit better. Um, so if you go to the CAPR site, um, you'll be able to see the, the comparison between the Canadian and the Australian grads. So if you go to um, international degrees, um, there's, a, there's a comparison that you can see the two uh, sets of data. Can you join this program after grade 12? No, these, well, we do have another set of degrees and those are Bachelor of Physiotherapy programs. Good question. Um, so the Bachelor of Physiotherapy programs are four-year programs. These you can apply to straight out of high school. So as long as you have um, a conferred um, high school diploma, you can apply for the BPT, the Bachelor of Physiotherapy. The Bachelor of Physiotherapy is a four-year program. They're very competitive because they're straight to practice professional practice uh, programs, which we don't have here in Canada. Um, so they're, if you've got good grades, if you've got um, certain prerequisites that they like to see, like um, English for sure, a little bit of math, some science, some bio, um, then you can certainly apply to those. These degrees, once you've graduated, are also eligible to come back and license to, to practice in Canada as well, which is pretty cool. So you've got three program options, really. There's the Bachelor of PT, which is a professional undergraduate program. There's the Master's, and um, which is the two-year or four-semester. The Doctor of Physiotherapy, which is the extended Master's, six-semester, two to three years. And then if you wanted to go on to post postgraduate, do a doctorate, that's an option for you as well through the, B, the DPT pathway. Any other questions here for me? Oh, I see one popping up here. Do you assist to get into BPT? Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, I can certainly help you with that. Absolutely. Um, we don't have a ton of students who want to go. Most students um, prefer to do their undergraduate here and then do the postgraduate in, um, in Australia, just because it's a lot cheaper over, overall. So if you do a two-year, three-year program here in Canada, and then only have to do a two to three-year in Australia, you get some, some cost savings there. However, if you've got the means, by all means, <laughs> you could do all four years in Australia, for sure. Okay, I see another question here. Which university? Um, well, what I can do, Rahul, is I can send you a whole list of the, um, the schools that have the BPT, or you can go to our website on the physiotherapy page. You can scroll down to where the universities are listed and you can see which programs have the BPT. What do you recommend as first steps to applying this year? Okay, great question. So the very first step will be to order your interim transcript. 
or your final transcript, depending on if you finished in December of 2022, you can order your, your final it, once it's available. Some students, some universities don't confer uh, degrees until mid-February. So best to wait until you've, you've got your graduate, um, your, your grad is finished. Um, if you're graduating this spring, then you can apply now or you can order your transcript now because you'll have the final results from your fall semester and then um, and your full enrollment for the winter semester. So then the universities can start their their um, start their applications. So once I have your transcript, then I'll need a few other pieces of um, documents and things. So some of the universities have specific forms. Uh, we'll need your passport as well, like a, a scan of the photo page of your passport. And that we, we the universities require that to make sure that you're a genuine student. Um, uh, there's an online form that you have to fill out. And then, so as soon as you start an application through OzTrack, I'll send you the full list of documents that you need for each program. And then we'll get going one after, and I'll help to keep you on track as well. I'll let you know which, pro, which documents I still need for each uh, uh, applications before I can submit them. Okay, here's another question. What's the average age for students who apply for DPT and MPT? Well, that's hard to say. Um, it really depends. There are some students who, who are applying straight out of their undergraduate degree. Um, so they may be 20, 21, 22, depends on when they started. Um, or some, some of our students have waited. Um, maybe they've gone, they've completed a health sciences degree and then they've gone into the workforce, decided they'd like to change careers. So now they wanna, pivot into another career. So we may have students um, in the 30 year age range and up. So it's 100% different and very variable. Um, one thing to make note of is that most universities really only want to see degrees that are no longer, no older than 10 years, right? So it's the same as applying for graduate school in Canada. Uh, once your undergrad is at 10 years, it's it's, it can be tough to, to get a placement unless you've got like related work experience. So something to keep in mind. Okay, uh, Rahul has another question. Um, okay, you have a son in first year. Okay, I can give you a call and talk to you about that. No problem. PDF transcript is okay? Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of the universities now are doing digital versions of uh, their transcripts. So you can ask your uh, university to send the transcript directly to our email. Um, so it's transcripts at oztrack.com. It's also listed on the website. So there's two, there are really, two, well, three main, main ways that students will send their transcripts to us. One is by mail. So SFU, for example, will only mail transcripts. So that's one way. Um, uh, we can accept them digitally through um, email, but the university would have to contact us directly. And then other student or other universities um, can use um, MyCreds or another uh, other transcript hosting um, platforms. So you can do it that way as well. Okay, any other questions? Oh, here's another one. If the course has a lower set amount of clinical hours than needed to come back to Canada, how do we get the remaining clinical hours? Very good question. Okay, so one of the best ways um, that students love to do is to just, just stay in Australia for a six month to a year to 18 months on a temporary graduate visa after grad, um, because the process to becoming a professional uh, PT in uh, Australia is a lot more streamlined than it is here in Canada. So whilst you are working on your registration here in Canada, you can start working in Australia, live as a regular non-student professional, start making money, start touring around, enjoying your weekends and things. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of benefits to this route. Um, the other way to do it is to talk to your uh, program director, faculty advisor. At the university, they may have volunteer uh, options for you. For example, at Flinders University, they have an on-campus clinic and they allow students who um, are working on clinical hours to go and volunteer, work on um, patients and clients there at the clinic, and that can boost your hours as well. Often the, the shortage of hours is quite manageable. So for example, it, again, Flinders, we'll use that, um, that example. You will, the, the, hour, the hours will vary from year to year. The last I heard it was about 975 hours built into the program. So that leaves about a month's work worth of full-time work to cover 
the whole thing. Um, another option that we're, I'm not 100% sure is going to be true this year because it was true of the MPT at Sydney as of this year, but next year the DPT will kick in, so we'll have to wait and see. But up till now, Sydney has offered uh, an extra clinical placement specifically for Canadian students to make up the, the missing hours that they, they are short in the Sydney program. So the Sydney program is about 800 and I think it was 840 for the MPT and it's gonna be 880 something for the DPT. So you'll be short about 200 and some odd hours, which you can do with this extra clinical placement. It is the cost of another course, however. So that's the difference between paying for your clinical hours or getting a job and being paid for your clinical hours. Okay, so what is considered applicable working experience if your degree is almost 10 years old? If your degree is almost 10 years old, it should be okay as long as your prereqs are not 10 years old. Um, applicable working experience is going to be probably on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so if you've been working in a, in a physiotherapy clinic, um, if you've been uh, working in a healthcare environment, um, it really depends. The university admissions office would need to see your, your resume and um, we would work through that. But if, if your degree isn't 10 years old yet, you may be okay still. Any other questions out there? Happy to help. If anybody has questions, of course, you can always contact me via email. So lara at oztrack.com. You can also give us a call. So if you'd like to um, set up a, a Calendly meeting, you can go straight to the web page on the physiotherapy page. Scroll down to the bottom. You'll see my, my face. And then you can, um, you can book a call. And we can go through all of your questions one-on-one -on -one, if you prefer. OK. Um, I can call you Rahul. I have got some other calls lined up this afternoon, but if you like, um, you can book me through the Calendly meeting or I can give you a call at some point this afternoon if that works for you. Okay, great. I'll talk to you this afternoon. Okay, so um, Anonymous says, if my GPA is right on the cusp, how much do the admissions team take in for my work experience as consideration for my overall application? Okay, so um, overall work experience really isn't going to help uh, you with your admissions. So in Australia, they really only want to look at two things. They want to look at your GPA and they want to look at the completion of prerequisite uh, credits. So um, in the case of, there's always exceptions to the rule. So at Bond and at Melbourne, they have an, an interview as a portion of their admissions process. So if you have work experience, you can talk about it at the Bond interview. Um, it, the, the interview at Melbourne is a, a multi-mini interview. So um, they're really assessing you on your ability to communicate. So there's a lot more impact and um, weight given to the um, interview portion at Melbourne. So um, and the other thing about Melbourne too is that they do a weighted average mark. So the final two years of your degree are going to have more weight um, applied to your grade. So if you, like a lot of Canadian students, a lot of students all over the world, struggle a little bit in your first year or two years, then um, the, uh, Melbourne might be a good option for you because they'll focus more on your latter years where students generally do better. Um, there's no real prep for the MMI. Um, if anything, uh, the universities don't want to see students who are um, over-practiced or over-prepared. They want you to be able to speak off the cuff. How, having said that, though, we do have some tips and some resources, articles you can read, um, things that you can do to sort of semi-prepare for the MMI. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. I don't think so. Okay. Any other questions out there? Okay, well, we're at 1232. And I think we're supposed to go till 1230. So I'm going to call it here. Um, please do get in touch with me if you ever have any questions. I'm more than happy to help. You can call me, you can book a call, we can email anything you like. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope to hear from you soon. And good luck with your applications. Bye bye.